Hello everybody, welcome back to Absolutely PlayStation and Steam Gamers. I'm Dylan, that's Houston, and this week we've got some news for you on the lots of Pokemon news by the looks of it. So yep. Houston, you've got some stuff. Why don't you kick us I off do. our first bit? Alright, so the big thing in the Pokemon world, um, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl officially have their release date. They will be out, um, shoot, I just lost it. Sorry, November 19th of this year. Um, along with that, we got the cover art, and it is the most detailed we have ever seen in a Pokemon game ever. You can see the taste buds on Dalgia's tail. Dalgia, Dal Dalgia, Dalgia? Dialga. Dialga. I knew I'd get there eventually. <laughs> but you can literally see the taste buds. Wow. Also, Palkia is fluffy. Oh, is Pal- <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> But they're dragons. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a fluffy dragon. Like, you could see okay. fur in the detail. This is, like, the most detail I've ever seen of a Pokemon. First dinosaurs, now yep. dragons. <laughs> yep. And you can see taste buds, you can see fur. It is crazy. Man. It reminds me of uh, in uh, when they did the, the Mario Odyssey renders of Mario and his, like, his, his mustache and hair is just, yep. like, the most detailed it's ever been. Just uncomfortable. <laughs> now, the real question is, is this just box art, or will the games have somewhat more of this detail? Mm. I highly doubt it. I'm pretty sure yeah. it's just for the box art. I think if you put the renders that they used for this box art into, uh, like, and try to render it in real time in the Nintendo Switch, the Nintendo Switch would literally crack in half. Yes. I don't, <laughs> I don't there's a chance. <laughs> yeah. But that brings some more news. Amazon Mexico apparently put up the um, Switch Pro Okay. before it was taken down. I heard about this. Yes. So, I mean, it's just a rumor, but there's a chance we're going to get an announcement for a Switch Pro very shortly because normally yeah. when this happens, the announcement's a few days later. Right. Which is actually, like, the. I think Nintendo's pretty, pretty quick about that. Like, they'll, like, especially with Smash stuff, usually they'll come yeah. out and, like, when a leak happens, they'll either dispel it or... Um, confirm it. Yeah. Uh, but like the most recent time I can remember something like this happening was with Elden Ring when it when the trailer leaked and we yep. still haven't seen that a trailer officially. We still have not. So, it. I mean, they're sticking to their guns. Good for them. They uh, are. They're like, you know what? Fine. You don't get it now. Somebody leaked yeah. it. <laughs> Stakes yeah, to wait you. <laughs> two more years delayed even further every time somebody mentions Elden Ring. Yep. Uh, but. Yeah, this is interesting because the Switch Pro has been rumored for a long time, and we are on the eve of E3. We so. are. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets announced at E3. Um, in all honesty, I'd be more surprised if it doesn't at this point for the amount right. of times it's been brought up and things like that. So it's just a and wait also, and see. I saw some 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 freak on Twitter posted this horrible image that compared the amount of time from the Wii U coming out to the Switch from the Switch to now, and it's the same amount of time, <laughs> <laughs> which is bizarre to me. Uh, but it is kind of bizarre. Having five years between the Wii U and the Nintendo Switch and five years between the Switch and today, like it's about time that we get uh, a Switch yes. Rev 2. I think um, so too. Which We got the Switch Lite. But like, that doesn't that really count. That was just a portable, a more yeah. portable version than our current Switch. So yeah, especially yeah. now that we have like the new consoles, and I think it's very clear that Nintendo is, um, very on board with with the Switch. Like they kind of struck gold with it. So. Oh, they did. There's no need to make something different. No, just more powerful. Right. In my personal opinion. I agree. I think that like if if they just stuck with cuz obviously it's always going to be lower powered cuz it's a it's a handheld console. Yeah. Um but Nintendo has all even their their home consoles has have always been uh lower powered. So Yeah. You know, uh, it's fine by me. And and um like all in one like computers of that size have been making like huge leaps in the in the uh most recent years. So yeah. I'm excited to see what a Switch Pro could bring i just my main thing is i want a bigger screen and less bezel that's all i want <laughs> that would be nice i mean it i personally play in handheld over on um over tv so to mm. me it's fine but i do know it could definitely use more power especially if it wants games like apex on it 
because yeah. <laughs> it's literally unplay. It's not unplayable, but it's, but it's playable. But you can't yeah. really play versus the cross platform, or you'll be at a significant disadvantage. So, yeah, yeah. There's definitely been a significant improvement in yeah. uh, technology and in, in the those five years, especially in small form factor stuff. So. Yeah. Hopefully we see that soon. All right. And next up, I've got Pokemon Legends Arceus is launching January 28th, 2021. Only 2022. Sh- 2022, sorry. Yes. <laughs> it's already out. Uh, it's already out. Spoilers, we missed it. <laughs> uh, no, but it is it is coming out only a few short months after yeah. Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So That says two things to me. Or one of two things. That either says they don't have any confidence in Diamond and Pearl, or they don't have any confidence in the Arceus game. <laughs> so, a, there's a lot of flack going on right now in the comment section of the tweet that was posted by Pokemon. A lot of people think it's being rushed. Mm. But I, the other question to me is, how do you know it's being rushed? Yes, they just announced it, but how long have they been working on it? Right. I mean, okay. So let's not let's not ignore the elephant in the room. This game oh, yeah. is a knee-jerk response to Breath of the Wild. Oh, 100%. Um, Breath of the Wild has been in development since like 2009. Yeah. Um <laughs> so if but, but even then like if we want to say that Breath of the Wild ca- comes out 2017, and um game freak is like ooh, we like that giving them the benefit of the doubt they've been working on this for five years which is around how long games like this take to make yeah um so i don't know because like again like breath of the wild has been in it was in development for longer but that game is like infamously like a very delayed project um so i i mean that i've I think this game is being rushed, but I don't know if it's being, I don't know if it's being rushed because it actually is like studio mandate being rushed. I think it's just being rushed because Game Freak is lazy and they just want to put it out. It's very possible. And also because of that, um, I mean, it's not a main series Pokemon game. Right. There's no real Pokemon trainers. There's not going to be gym battles as far as I know. Just from the thing, it one of the things is it's before the time of Pokemon trainers and organized competitions. I could be wrong. There could be 100% gym battles and all that stuff in it as well. I think it's another spinoff title. Yeah, I agree. Just to see how an open world Pokemon game would do. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that, that's kind of the, the troubling part right is like it's an experiment but but also they're not like putting like they know it's an experiment so it seems like they don't really care about it like the last time we saw it in that trailer i was actually watching this with some with some buddies uh like a month ago or something uh and it it doesn't look good like there's a lot of issues with it (laughs) um like the world itself looks beautiful the actual pokemon's Mm. movements didn't look great well, like even if you compare it to, because the the one one of the main things I was doing that I was just shocked by when I was comparing it is if you compare the the big vista opening shot of Breath of the Wild to the big vista opening shot of Legends of Arceus, it it's hilarious. <laughs> like, I the, mean, yeah, I'm looking at a picture of it right now. You're not wrong, but this has much more of a like watercolor pen, uh, pencil watercolor kind of feel to it as opposed to breath of the wild but you know i mean i just it's the it's the same lack of detail and care that i saw in the wild area of sword and shield yeah um that i i see the same the same stuff here and like like you said yeah like the 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 frame rate on a lot of the pokemon the animations are still like really really rough um like when they showed that trailer yeah hearing january 28th 2022 is very surprising like 2023 was. maybe i, I was see. expecting holiday of next year yeah that's that, what i that, was expecting that would make more sense as a target which also I, makes me wonder this is completely rumor but you heard it here first <laughs> january 28th 2022 switch pro comes out <laughs> mm, so you're saying this will launch with <laughs> this it. might be rushed for a launch title for the switch pro yeah i i don't know i'd 
I'd have to go back and look like historically it because I know console launches. Consoles are like historically announced and then released pretty quickly. Yeah. Um. So well, if it's so, announced at E3, that's only six months. That's not that big yeah. of a time frame. So well, I, I'm thinking like maybe sooner. Like I'm you thinking they get right. this, the Switch Pro out, but like, because what other game do they have? <laughs> yeah. Like Breath of the Wild two, I guess. But we don't know when that's coming. You're not wrong. I mean, hell, it could be the biggest reveal of all time. Breath of the Wild <laughs> 2 comes out this day. Guess that what else great. comes out that day? The Switch the Pro. The Switch Pro. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way they could keep a hardware release like that under wraps. <laughs> that would be crazy. It would be. Um, but that's pretty much it for the Pokemon news right now. Um, the other thing, Monster Hunter did have their... Um, may announcements uh they've added some new stuff to it monster hunter rise uh, two new monsters well not necessarily new but two more monsters were announced for high level questing valstrex and apex uh uh, xenogra i can never say its name right xenograde (laughs) xenogar xenogri um i know i will be shunned in the monster hunter universe for saying it that way (laughs) um but version 3.0 also added apex rathalos apex diablos and apex uh xenogre to be fought outside of rampages um they've also are adding a new ending to make the um presentation a little bit more uh, what's the word i'm looking for fulfilling i would say Hmm. um so If you've already beat it, there's a reason to go back now. They added a new ending. Um, And then there's going to be new quests, new boss battle arenas, new weapon trees, armored, lair armored, all sorts of stuff, just like they did with World. So that's no big Mm -hmm. surprise here. Um, On top of that, during the same thing, they gave more Monster Hunter Story 2 news, Wings of Rune. Uh, From the bit I watched of it... um, it looks more mature than the original Monster Hunter stories. Still has that kid feel to it, but it doesn't feel like, ha look at me, I'm a Saturday morning cartoon. Hmm. It had more of a, I don't want to say adult tune to it, but definitely a different tone than the first one. Uh, that does, however, come out um, next month. When was oh, it? Oh, cool. Yeah. It's pretty quick. That is coming out July 9th, so not next month, the month after. Yeah. So a little cool. over a month that that will be out. Nice. So, um, and then one other thing I found, um, Xbox and PS5 shortages are expected to continue into 2022. Yeah, that, that sucks, but that makes complete sense to me. It I've does. been, I've been struggling with, with, um, things related to the chip shortage for a long time. I build computers as like a side business for people. And, uh, the amount of people I've had to tell, like, I'll build you a computer, but good luck finding a graphics card. Yeah. Uh, is, is rough. Um, and it's, I don't know. It's weird that it hasn't affected like, um, cause you would think it would affect like Nintendo as well, but they seem fine. I don't um, think they're using the same type of chip. That's why. I think it's, yeah, a different silicon. But it's, uh, it, it's strange because I would, I'd have to look into that because I know like it's, it's, it's just kind of like a global silicon shortage and the chips that are being produced only well, are produced in like two factories. <laughs> the Switch has been having shortages as well. Yeah. Um, especially when the pandemic started, it was the hardest thing to find. That was a course, demand everybody thing, though. Wanted. It was a demand thing. But on top of that demand, now it's even harder to find them in stores. I'm starting right. to see the lights again, but very rarely do I see an actual mm-hmm. switch. Yeah. And I think that's... The, the demand like that is a huge... like the, the, There are so many reasons why... Um, uh, everything is is like out of stock. Like it's it's not just the silicon shortage. Like PS5s oh, yeah. and Xbox Ones, people are still scalping those. They are. Um, switches, I think, like yeah, early pandemic because everybody wanted them because of like Animal Crossing and all yep. that, and you know being stuck inside. Uh, that that drove that market up. But I feel like scalpers are kind of done with switches, so they're uh, I think returning so back now. to regular stock or regular ish stock. Um, but yeah, that sucks. 
I hope it 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 clears up at some point. Um, if you're a scalper, go away. <laughs> Knock it off. You're ruining it for everybody else. All right. Yeah. For Stop real. Stop it. Uncool of you. Just not cool. Also, nope. not video game related, but screw you two on the Pokemon cards because now I can't even go to Target and buy them because you guys ruined it. Get a job that's not ruining fun for people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You said you had some stuff too. Yeah. So uh, a couple things, a little uh, cleanup from, from last week as well. Um, Avengers and Overwatch both had some stuff. So last week, Avengers started their Red Room Takeover event, which uh, did you did you play any of? I haven't played the Red Room Takeover stuff. No. So did you I play? I stopped. Uh, um, basically, I finished Hawkeye's story, and that's I haven't picked up since then. Okay, so the this is the first like what they what they build as like an actual event. Mm -hmm. um, like they introduced a new character, kind of, uh, and it's got story and like new rooms, kind of. Um, <laughs> it's it's not great. Uh, they introduced it with the with the champion level system. There was like a prelude to this called the Ruskaya Protocols, which which was also not great, but it was like a, it was just, it seemed like just like a reason to play. It didn't seem yeah. like there wasn't a lot of pomp and circumstance. They didn't even announce it. It was just like, this is a thing that's happening before Red Room Takeover. Have fun. Surprise. Yeah, exactly. Um, but they've been leading up to this Red Room Takeover thing and they're like, yeah, we have Yelena Belova in this. Um, and, and she's, she's the reason that all this is happening. She's after Black Widow for some reason. Uh, <laughs> but that's only on like their social media that you that you hear her speak and stuff. When you actually get in game, there's no cutscenes, there's no voice lines, there's like there's nothing when you do the missions. It's five harm rooms that have different layouts that are all red and you can punch enemies into some lava that kills them and you instantly. Um and okay. that's it. <laughs> And you have to know, do those like 30 times to complete the event. I know the, the big thing for the Red Room, though, was Marvel costumes, like MCU costumes. Well, that's like that. They've been doing that like have consistently. They? Yeah, that's so that started um, that started earlier this month uh, or like late last month, I think. And they've been we have uh, it's all endgame costumes. We have Hulk's, Iron Man's, uh, Hawkeye's and Widow's so far. And uh, Captain America's has been leaked. Uh, so we're getting that at some point. Why would they uh, give Hawkeye one before Cap? Who's to say? <laughs> they didn't even give him his, his mohawk. He's just bald. It's stupid. What? Okay. Yeah, it's lame. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's. I was kind of excited for it because it seemed like, like a small little story event that they could do. But I played it, and it was honestly worse than the Ruskaya Protocols. Because the Ruskaya Protocols, you we're playing regular missions. The goal was just to get a bunch of like one, um, like item that dropped from any enemy, as long as you had black widow in your team. Yeah. So you're just playing the game and you got extra rewards on top of that. Um, but the red room takeover is just, you're playing harm rooms for like hours. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> the only, uh, the only redeeming quality about it is once you beat it, once you beat the main mission for red room or for red room takeover, you get, um, you get an exotic, for every single one of your heroes, oh, that's which cool. is pretty cool. Yeah. But that's like the only reason I would say to yeah. play it is, uh, and it's cool because I, usually they just give you an exotic for like the character that you complete the mission on, but it gave you one for every single character, which is fun. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's, that's the, that's what happened in Avengers. Overwatch got some more interesting news. Uh, so they had a Overwatch two developer live stream in which a uh, few things were announced. The biggest, the headlining thing is that Overwatch 2 will, the PvP will no longer be 6v6. It will be 5v5 um, with the the uh, role layout of one tank, two DPS, and two healers. Okay. So that causes like a lot of uh, concerns and rifts. Uh, the community is kind of split over it. Some people are in the camp of, like, it's a good thing because it's going to reduce queue times. And, uh, like the devs said themselves, it makes the game a little less confusing and tanks can be kind of overbearing. But then there's people on the other side who are like, well, tank synergy is really fun and there are specific strategies with that that 
are kind of a good time. Uh, and also a lot of, a lot of like s- six man groups are going to have to kick someone out. Um, <laughs> including like, like Overwatch League players. Like some of, a lot of them yeah. are just going to lose their jobs, uh, which kind of sucks. But I don't know. What, what's your take on this? You've played some Overwatch. I mean, I, I don't, I've played some. But I'm not big enough into the competitive scene. I, I mean, it's definitely going to change it completely. But I'm not yeah. really too sure. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a pretty big change, and it's kind of yeah. what they've been hinting at for a while. Because the, early on, when they, when they first announced Overwatch 2, they were like, we are doing Overwatch 2. It's not an expansion. It's a full sequel because we want to do bold things that we wouldn't be able to do in like a patch. Like we want to make sweeping changes to the game that if we just introduced on like a random uh, Tuesday, people would lose their minds, (laughs) but they'll lose their minds less if we do it with a different game. Um, So it's, it's definitely interesting. I I'm kind of down for it personally. I think there are some aspects that suck. The the biggest one that I kind of sympathize with are like, if you do have like a group of six friends, um, that all get together and you play. Yeah. It's like, you got to kind of kick one of your buddies out and that sucks. Um, like that changes everything, especially because Overwatch's whole thing was their pro tournaments. Mm -hmm. They literally just changed it completely. Yeah, they changed the game, which yeah. like I, I get it. I, you know, I, I I think the biggest thing that they didn't even mention in the stream for some reason is the queue times. Um, I think like queue times needing one less tank are they're going to be way quicker. Yeah. Um, and also the changes that they're making to the tank role, they're trying to make it seem more desirable uh, or they're changing it to basically be, be just beefy DPS, uh, yeah. which is good. I think because that game definitely has a problem with, with long queue times, especially if you're queuing as like a solo DPS. Yeah. But I don't know. I think it's ultimately a good, a good call. Um, time will tell. Obviously there is a, there is a couple people have created a, a workshop game mode in overwatch one that introduces all of the changes that that stream brought. Like okay. some other changes were may can no longer freeze people. She just does more damage and slows people with her left click. Um, Winston has an alternate fire that shoots a beam at long range, which is something I've been asking for forever (laughs) because without it, Winston is essentially useless in in, in current modern overwatch. Um, That's weird. They're changed may. So you can't freeze it. May has been a problem. So another like kind of big change that they didn't, they they talked about, but they didn't talk about it like enough. I think is crowd control, reducing crowd Mm -hmm. control, which is an issue that overwatch has had like since they started adding new characters because the first character they added, uh, Anna, has uh, a sleep, which stuns yeah. you. Um, and then basically every character since then has had some kind of stun or crowd control. Like like going all the way up to Doomfist, who a good Doomfist player can basically make you not play the game for like 10 seconds. And it's so frustrating. That uh, sounds frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it's a nightmare. Um, so May was like a huge one. Is like if you get a good May you just also just like, you're just frozen and you die like there. And there's not really much you can do about it because she's already slowing you down. So if you're not a super fast character, you're screwed. Um, so I think, I guess that makes sense then. Yeah. A lot of the changes I think are, are, are for the better. Uh, but it's really, they're really going to have to like tiptoe around it and make sure everything works out. But so the, the last bit of news that we're not really going to cover super well because, uh, neither Houston and I watched it, (laughs) but the um, uh, Horizon Forbidden West did like a PlayStation Now like yes. gameplay reveal. I did um, watch it. Oh, okay. But I thought you um, did not. I never beat the first one, so gotcha. I don't have much of a say. It looks beautiful. Don't get me wrong; it is beautiful mm-hmm. looking. Yeah. Uh, the graphic changes for PS5 are fantastic. Cool. Yeah, I'm, but I uh, the, I'm I'm weird about like watching stuff. So for context, Horizon Zero Dawn is my is currently my favorite game of all time. Um, I think I, I share that with Shank, uh, so, and Shank might do like a, he's very excited from what I've heard, so <laughs> he might do like a full deep dive on it, but, um, I, if I know I'm going to watch or play something, I kind of don't want to like get into the hype machine. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather just wait for it to come out. Um, so, and, and I was going to watch it for this podcast, but Benny was like, not much happened. They didn't really talk about much or reveal anything. Yeah. They so. didn't. It was just, Hey, here's some gameplay. 
what yeah. do you think? That's, Which that's, that's all fine. it was. Yeah, it's similar. I guess that's something PlayStation does now because uh, they yeah. did that with Ratchet and Clank as well. Um, so, cool with me. I'm very yeah. excited for that game. I saw a GIF of her doing some kind of cool like melee animation where she loads a thing into her spear yeah, yeah. and so slams she it the basically ground. does a thing. I actually made fun of it because in the trailer <laughs> she's doing that. The guy's right here, <laughs> and it's like. She's got about Good. 0. 0.3 seconds to flip this thing up, put it in, and slam it down to push him back before he knocks her out. <laughs> and to me, she skinny. should have been knocked out. <laughs> Fair. Are they, uh, so with, with, that's the only thing I've seen. Are, is there, are they like, um, putting more emphasis on the melee system this time? Or is uh, that no, just like the no, only thing? So they also did show what I would imagine to be a boss fight, um, where, she is on one of the machines riding it, and then in comes another machine. I won't spoil what kind of machine it is for you, because uh, I know you cool. hate that. Um, but <laughs> she then has to figure out how to fight this thing. They showed off new weapons, new, uh, but the bow seems to still be the main focus. Cool. But I don't, because I didn't play, you could tell me this. Could you shoot off things from the robots and then use those as weapons? Yes. It was okay. uh, few and far between, but that's that was definitely something they focused yeah. on on trailers and stuff. Okay. Was, yeah. um, you could do that for sure. Because in, in this, they literally showed it. She shot a part of the gun off and then picked it up and used it against it. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's for the big machines like the uh, the T Rex. You could shoot its yeah. little cannons off and then pick it up and like ruin okay. the thing. So with yeah, it. you can do that in this one as well. But cool. overall, it uh, the bow still seemed the main focus, but it seemed like they put some more emphasis on the melee, so it's more fun. <laughs> that's that's what I expected because the melee was definitely something in the first game that felt underdeveloped. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Horizon is by all means not a uh, perfect game. I've, I've actually considered like making a video uh, critiquing it for a while <laughs> just because I have a lot of issues with it. Uh, but the, you know, the, the things that I love about it eclipse those so heavily yeah. that it's become my favorite game. But um, it's uh yeah, the melee was definitely not, not like a sour spot, but definitely like, like why even put it in? Cause yeah. all it is is like a heavy and light attack and it does like nothing. Yeah. Um, it looks like they definitely added more to it, especially with the whole charging the spear and everything. So mm -hmm. Cool. That Time seemed like a, a logical leap for it. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, and I did just find two more things that I'd like to cover real fast. Uh, Dying Light 2 has a new name and official release date, finally. Okay. It is Dying Light 2 Stay Human and will be released December 7th, 2021 for PS5, 4, nice. Xbox Series X, Xbox One, and PC. Um, and then lastly, this just got announced a couple hours ago. Far Cry 6 will officially be out October 7th. Oh, of 2021. wow. 2021. Yep. So That's there's soon. new gameplay. There's a whole bunch of new stuff if you want to check it out. Because uh, it's already supposed to be out. It was supposed to come out in February. But oh, they pushed okay. it back. I didn't know that. So, yep. So that will be out this October as well. And those were the last two big uh, announcements I've seen at least nice well that's that's all the news that we found for you this week yeah um stay tuned uh we will probably be back with the podcast uh at some time and more discussions i think shank will probably do something about the horizon gameplay uh oh, but otherwise we'll catch you all next time right here at absolutely playstation and steam gamers i'm dylan that's houston see y'all next time see you later